Hi guys, I'm back again with some more stories for you today. Let's go to the first one, about OP's daughter, who was disinherited by OP's father because he didn't like her husband. Now OP wants to give her daughter a portion of her inheritance to match the amount, but there's one problem. Listen to the story to find out, and of course to hear my insights. Enjoy the stories, guys, and don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, don't forget to leave a comment. Are we the a-holes, really? Because my husband made the decision with me. My father passed away a few months ago and left a pretty sizable estate behind. The majority went to my sister and me, with an equal amount of money to each grandchild. Or so I thought. My kids are grown, so I never really thought to reach out about the money because the executor was handling it. My daughter never mentioned it, but she's always been frugal, so I figured she didn't want to discuss it and had some plan for it. Recently, we had a family meal, and my son brought up the inheritance and my daughter revealed that she had received nothing and didn't know that any of her cousins or brother had. It is very clear to us that she was cut from the will because my father always disapproved of my son-in-law. My husband and I talked it over and decided to give a portion of our inheritance to our daughter and her husband to match the amount given to the other grandkids. We're still working with a lawyer to figure out the best way to give her the money, so the transfer hasn't actually happened yet. But we will definitely be doing this. Our son is very upset because he feels that this is a gift coming from us, and it is unfair that we're not also giving him money. He feels that since my father chose not to give money to my daughter, that's the end of it, and that any money we give our daughter is now an unfair gift. Are we the a-holes for doing this and not giving our son anything? I don't think OP is in the wrong here, while OP's son is acting like a spoiled brat. He already got something from the will. By giving her daughter money out of OP's own chunk of the inheritance, OP is just righting wrongs, and not excluding her daughter. OP doesn't owe her son any money on top of what he has already been given. Don't you think so, guys? And now let's see if the community agrees with me. Orange Olivia Rowe says, Not the a-hole. Your son definitely is. He sounds incredibly selfish. You're quite the opposite of a-holes here. You're very generous and unselfish people. Ray Ann says, Not the a-hole. So he is fine with unfair gifts that benefit him and thinks that the person giving the money should make the decision. But when you were giving money to write what you see as a wrong, it's unfair. You can do what you want to with your money. Feel free to give it to your daughter and not even tell your son about it. It's not his business anyway. AZ Busy B says, Not the a-hole, but two things. One, once you received your inheritance, it's now your money and you're entitled to do whatever you want with it. Two, I can't understand how your son feels a little jilted because he's probably seeing it as his future inheritance getting cut in half. But you know what? He's just going to have to get over it. For all he knows, you and your hubby are going to go buck wild in retirement and spend all of your money partying, and there won't be any inheritance at all. Who knows? You can deal with what you have in front of you for now, and it sounds like you made the right choice. I, 53 female, lost my husband three years ago. We had our now 13-year-old daughter and then adopted a girl who was now nine. Our nanny was hired four and a half years ago. We paid her well because she's expected to not just babysit, but to be a part of the kid's education. My husband left me his entire estate. Between making sure the employees at his chain of businesses are still producing to their full potential and managing his family's investment properties, I have my hands full. In April of this year, I met my boyfriend, 23. Despite him being quite a bit younger, he was intelligent and I quickly realized that we had the same values in life, including wanting a big family and wanting to explore the artistic side of ourselves. In October, he told me his mom and himself were evicted from their townhouse. He has a college degree, but needed time to build his credit and was having trouble finding a job. So we decided to move in together, and I also employed him as a manager of sales and design at one of my late husband's companies, and the people who he works with have had no complaints. Around this time, he started taking on some of the household responsibilities. I soon felt some kind of animosity between him and my daughter's nanny. When I'd ask what was going on, he told me he felt like everything he was doing quite easily were things that were also part of the nanny's job description and that perhaps she was feeling insecure about it. The tension built and one day I walked in on him standing there talking quickly and the nanny crying while my daughter was walking out of the room. Apparently, he had started writing on a piece of paper a better way to solve a math problem and pleading his case to my daughter about why this way was more convenient. The nanny was crying and saying she was following the book. Eventually, he said he was so frustrated because he felt my kid's nanny brought nothing more or better to the table than he did, and that we were spending a lot of money on a nanny who at the end of the day went home to her own family 
and he wanted to be a part of this family and already feels attached to my kids. And he could take care of them since he'll be home more than me. After the discussion, I decided to make the decision and let our nanny go. My nanny accepted graciously, but started crying when we told the kids. My daughter started yelling at me and saying that she's more apparent than my boyfriend will ever be. It has been a couple of days and my younger daughter has gotten mostly back to her usual self, but my older daughter keeps sulking in her room. She said that the nanny was a second mom, and while she was kind, the both of us, meaning me and my boyfriend, were moody and impatient, and I should have asked permission. I said asking permission was a bit strong a term because I was still her mother, and she replied that everything that the nanny did, my boyfriend was doing wrong, or not at all, and she couldn't wait for winter break to end. Am I the a-hole? OP is definitely in the wrong here, and so is her boyfriend. OP's boyfriend made the nanny cry in front of the children, and OP thinks he's qualified to raise them? OP's boyfriend has manipulated OP to give him, an amateur with no childcare background, who is basically a stranger to OP's kids, more responsibility over OP's children, and at the same time to fire their professional caretaker, who they know and trust. Well, looks like OP is not thinking with her brain. Me 230422 says, Let's count the ways you're the a-hole. You took a consistent out of your daughter's lives solely because your walking D told you to. You think a 23-year-old has their best interest in mind? You think the walking D is with you for any reason outside of money? Scoopy Pookie says, You're the a-hole, and I have a feeling that young man is taking you for a ride. I don't know where they go to school, but where I went, if you couldn't show that you could do the work how the book did, you still failed no matter what answer you got. Also, your boyfriend doesn't sound supportive. He sounds like a know-it-all who found an older, rich, lonely lady to pay his bills. They are literally closer in age to him than you are, and you think they're just going to accept him as a parent because you forced it upon them? Or that you can actually trust this situation? Also, schooling children is a full-time move, so I don't know how he can be a manager of anything and be covering two children's education at the same time. IDS969 says, You're the a-hole. If my mom moved a 23-year-old in after my dad died and fired my nanny, one of the only constants in her life, and definitely helped her grieve her father's death, she's probably hurt the nanny is gone. If I was 13 and a 23-year-old bro told me what to do, I'd snap. She's probably going to be more defiant now. Most normal relationships take years to move in together, not a few months. I'd rehire the nanny ASAP. I, 34 female, got divorced to my ex-husband, 36 male, four years ago when I finally got tired of the constant berating and humiliation from him because we couldn't get pregnant despite trying. He kept making comments about it even at events with the rest of the family, making it seem as though it was my body that is the problem, even though no doctor ever confirmed that because we never went for an official checkup. I should have insisted, I know, but for some reason I just didn't. I completely believed it must be me. Everyone believed it, and mother-in-law kept voicing out her disappointments and giving me unwanted advices. Anyway, I reached a breaking point when at Thanksgiving, he made a comment congratulating my brother-in-law about my then-pregnant sister finally doing her part in the marriage. I went into a time of complete emotional blackout, wherein I just felt so empty and filed the divorce not even a week later. A year later, I met my now husband, and it just felt so different. I felt so safe and happy. We got married just two years later. He also wanted kids, but didn't care if it might be through adoption, so we signed up. However, six months ago, I started getting sick in the mornings and was late for my period because, lo and behold, I'm pregnant. We were so happy, but I wasn't ready to announce until I was sure I was. Haven't really unpacked why I was scared of telling people. I finally got the courage and made an announcement two weeks ago on Facebook. Three days later, my ex-mother-in-law called shaming me for celebrating my baby and basically shouting to the world my ex-husband was the problem and that it's him who can't have kids, saying it will hurt his future prospects and that he's heartbroken and wouldn't get up and eat. My husband saw how stressed I was and hanged up the phone for me. She tried calling again and again, but my husband wouldn't have it. Now I'm thinking maybe I should have called my ex to give him a heads up so he wouldn't have been so blindsided and that I took too long to be ready. Am I the a-hole? Well, looks like OP's ex-mother-in-law got to taste her own medicine. Wasn't she the one shouting to the world that OP was the one who couldn't have kids? Of course OP didn't do it on purpose. She just announced being pregnant, as all pregnant people do. What was she supposed to do? Hide it forever? 
OP's ex-husband has nothing to do with OP's pregnancy and nothing to do with the life OP has built. His fragile ego and toxic reproductive attitudes are not OP's problem. And now let's see what the community has to say on the matter. Blue Box One says, Shouting to the world? Clearly ex-mother-in-law has nothing better to do than stalk her son's ex-wife's Facebook. Not the a-hole. Congratulations on the baby. Ditsy Wonder says, Not the a-hole. It's not like you got pregnant at him. I feel this so much. My ex was the problem, but even when we knew it was him, he would make comments about how I couldn't have children while shaking his head in disappointment. Like it should just be a woman's burden to bear that accusation. Besides, were you supposed to never announce your pregnancy? Erythron says, You need therapy because you are still trying to shield this man despite how he treated you. You are not the a-hole and never was. You tolerated his aggression until you couldn't and have no reason to feel any guilt about your pregnancy. I'm thrilled that you found someone like your new husband who is protecting you from your ex-mother-in-law's aggression. Why does she still have your number? You and ex didn't have any kids, didn't have any mutual friends. Cut her and him out of your life. I, 27 male, am, as of yesterday, a father of one. My own father, 91 male, has been in very bad health since I was in high school, and I wake up every day without fail, fearing that today will be the day I lose my dad. My mother, now 50 female, dropped out of my life when I was three. My girlfriend, 27 female, and I live on the general grounds of my dad's estate. We agreed to do a home birth with a doula and midwife, unless there were complications. Unfortunately, however, she experienced issues throughout her pregnancy. When her labor started, she was throwing up and bleeding heavily. The midwife told us we needed to go to the hospital. So my girlfriend's parents and I went. My dad hates hospitals and spends a fortune on sourcing his medical care so he can avoid hospitals. So he refused to go. We get to the hospital and the doctor was saying that they would try to honor her wish to not do a C-section. But if things get any worse, they need to do one. Right after we get there, I start getting calls from my dad. I ignore the first one, but soon I have 17 missed calls and very angry texts saying that my girlfriend's brother was still there, is overly impressed by everything, and talks too much. He said he couldn't believe I left him alone with this annoying person. I tried to mitigate that situation by telling my girlfriend's brother he can wait in the hospital waiting room. Girlfriend's brother leaves, but then my dad texts saying he's all alone and asked why nobody wants to be in a sick man's company. Finally, I had enough of my dad's angst, so I promised to go stay with him until his nurse came in. My dad brightened considerably. However, when I was home, my girlfriend had an emergency C-section, and my dad said there's no point in leaving now. Now that my daughter is born, my girlfriend is furious, and when I went to see my daughter, she refused to say a word to me, except she was not going back to my dad's home. Am I the a-hole? My dad has become very mournful and insecure as of late, and I wanted to stop his anxiety. So, basically, OP abandoned his girlfriend, who was in the middle of an actual medical emergency, delivering OP's child, in order to go hang out with his dad, who was just throwing an old man tantrum, who could absolutely have waited on his own while OP's child was born. And OP still questions if he's an a-hole. Well, OP, you are for sure. Hobnob1974 says, I'm not going to call you an a-hole, but you are your father's bought and paid for puppet. At 64, he got a 23-year-old pregnant, kept the child, and got rid of the child's, your, mother. When your girlfriend was giving birth, he flexed his power and brought you to him just to ensure he still owns you. He does. You need counseling. I'm so sorry. Good from 70 says, You're the a-hole, like father, like son. To be frank, if this was you running to your mom instead of your dad, people would be calling you a mama's boy. Just let that sink in. One a bite says, how can you possibly think you are not the a-hole? You should have turned your phone off and been there for your girlfriend while she was literally ripped apart to bring your baby into the world. She could have died and you left her alone because your dad was lonely. I'm amazed she let you in her room at all. My partner passed away three years ago. We were together for 15 plus years and after a short illness, he left this world and his estate was passed along to his children. He didn't leave me anything at my urging, as we had enough time to get his will in order, and all I wanted from this man was his love. His children, all in their late twenties and thirties, got his home and car, as well as his bank accounts. The only things of my partner's I had were his clothing, most of which was in my home at the time of his death. In a spur of goodwill, 
My partner asked me to donate all of his clothing before he died, as it was all expensive and in good condition. I did as he asked, but kept a few of his old raggedy t-shirts that he used to sleep in. My partner's eldest daughter visited me over this Easter period, which she will often do once or twice a month. Her dad came up in conversation as he passed very close to the date of her visit, and in a stupid move on my part, I mentioned I had kept some of his sleep shirts and we took them out and reminisced, cried, and hugged. Over the last week, I've had nothing but numerous calls from her brother, who has always resented and disliked my presence in his father's life. He and his children's mother divorced, but since childhood, he has hated me. This has never been resolved. He insisted that I give over the shirts, and accused me of basically being a wicked witch who's holding on to the last emotional vestiges of his father. I called my partner's daughter, who I've always had a very good relationship with, and cried to her that I literally have nothing left of their dad, and the shirts are all I have. She agreed with me, and was very kind, and said I had a huge right to them and they were mine. She also apologized to me for telling her brother about the existence of the shirts, which I readily accepted, as I don't think she meant any malice. However, her brother will not let up, and is insisting I have no need to keep the shirts, and he called me in tears begging for the shirts back. Would I be the a-hole if I told him I won't be handing them over? I am still grieving, and can't fathom them not being here in my home. Tiger0204 says, Not the a-hole. Buy some old shirts off eBay or the local thrift store and send them to his son, just to make your life simpler. Wonder Twinkle says, Not the a-hole. They got everything else. You can have a couple of t-shirts. Block him. Ambartenen says, Not the a-hole. You have done nothing wrong. You are an angel to give up your rightful ownership of the house, cars, and bank accounts. A ducking saint. And I would have said no a-hole, that the youngest son is filled with grief, etc. Except, he is being an a-hole. Keep those shirts, live your best life, and feel zero guilt here.